Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're going to examine what is probably my most favorite outdoor experience, fly fishing on small streams. From where to find trout to the equipment you should use, this show will help you better understand this type of fly fishing. Come along to learn the joys of this unique and intimate fishing adventure. The new Fly Fisher is sponsored by the Atlantic Salmon Federation Bank of Montreal MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products. Today I'm joining my friend Raymond Sander Regier to fly fish on a small stream near his home. Like me, Raymond is a small stream addict and spends a great deal of time exploring small streams in his region. This area is the scenic and peaceful countryside of eastern Quebec, not far from Ottawa. There are numerous small and slowly meandering streams in this area which take their source from the Gatineau Hills. Moving along a small stream seems so natural you feel as one with the environment. You suddenly become aware of all the abundant life that surrounds you, from a damselfly hanging on a leaf to the croaking of a leopard frog. You realize that you are not alone, and it comforts you. This is the essence of small stream fly fishing. Like any excursion to the water, a fly fisher must ascertain what aquatic insects are available for forage. Usually this can be broken down into three principal groups of, of caddis, mayflies, and stoneflies. Often you can ascertain quite a bit about a stream's aquatic insect life just by checking spider webs or trees near the stream. Raymond and I began checking some of the rocks in the small riffle. Nice size. We quickly found an abundance of important food sources. It's a nice current here, lots of oxygen, obviously. We've seen caddis, lots of eggs. Yeah. Uh, here's some small clingers. I've found a lot of caddis, like you said. That's good. Nice. There was another one on there. I thought that smart. Took it off. I usually bring a small selection of popular flies when small stream fishing. Popular choices include nymph patterns such as a generic betas nymph pheasant tail beadhead nymph, and blue wing olive. Small streams also give you the opportunity to use terrestrial flies such as ant patterns and the deadly Madame X. The key is that you'll need to research what will work in your local area based on the insects you find present. This is all part of the fun and magic of small stream fly fishing. Each one is different no matter where you are in North America. Small stream fly fishing is not about catching monster trout. This is an exercise and opportunity and an enhanced outdoor experience. The trout in these streams rarely get large. A big one would be 14 inches long at best. However, each of these trout is a small glistening gem, a gift of nature, and one which should be returned unharmed.
Okay, up up around the bend, what I've found is there's a fairly shallow, especially where you see the reeds come mm -hmm. down to the bank. Mm -hmm. If you walk along that area um, and sort of roll cast into the opposite bank underneath the, the alders, mm -hmm. um, you can sometimes pull fish out. So yeah. we're not talking long casts here? No, no, just little casts. Um, that's why a, a seven and a half foot, you know, three weight rod is perfectly adequate. And you can do that with a nymph or a dry fly. Um, dry, nymphs often will pull them e out even a bit further than the dry. Mm -hmm. There are several common features in small streams that anglers can look for that will usually hold trout. Bend pools usually feature deep water on the outside edge, which can be a magnet to large trout. Often this type of pool will include undercut banks and some overhanging branches. The second type of structure to key in on is fallen trees. These provide excellent overhead cover for trout from many of their airborne predators. Tree roots, especially deeper ones, provide excellent holding cover for trout. The problem for fly fishers with this type of cover is how to best present flies to the trout and then quickly get them away from the tippet breaking roots. Overhanging branches, especially near deep water, are a natural trout holding area because the branches provide the requisite cover needed, plus occasionally provide a source of food when insects fall from the leaves. Undercut banks are probably the hardest structure of all to spot and usually will hold the largest fish in any small stream. Um, this little bend here, what the water's done is it's made it about two, two and a half feet deep and um, there's basically what I'm trying to do is rather than standing downstream and fishing up where I don't have as much control, stand off to the bank here where it's a little shallower, where I won't spook them and then just do a sort of side roll cast. Just, and that way you can do a, a dead drift, follow it down, you don't have to change the length of your line. Let it drift all the way down. Just bring it around and do another cast. And you can just you can do that all day. Mind you, after you've done it a few times, you may have spooked too many fish. But this, with with the, the little brookies in here, um, you can get numerous hits without having to worry about spooking them. Small stream fly fishing does not demand long and eloquent casts. In fact, prudent anglers would ignore such thoughts, or else be prepared to sacrifice most of their flies to tree branches. Popular techniques to use include dapping, often deadly with caddis patterns. Roll casts are your primary means of effectively presenting patterns to wary trout. The key is to be adaptable with this cast, such that you can perform it with both arms and at different angles. When fishing upstream or directly downstream, the opportunity may exist for full casts, but anglers should check your back cast for openings in the forest canopy, otherwise they will quickly empty their fly boxes. The importance of stealth cannot be overemphasized when fly fishing on small streams. You must remember that these fish generally do not have deep water or a large expanse of river to hide in from predators, and thus tend to be very wary. Anglers should avoid wading if possible, talking loudly, or walking heavily on banks. All will transmit danger signals to trout. It is prudent to wear earth-colored clothing, hats, and vests when small stream fishing. 
Trout will discern you more readily if you wear something that is bright or out of context with the surrounding vegetation. Oh, he's a nice size. For fly fishers who wish to learn more about the challenges and rewards of small stream fly fishing, there has been several excellent books written about this subject. Two of my favorites are Fishing Small Streams with a Fly Rod by Charles Mack and Fly Fishing Small Streams by John Gerrich. Both of these books are very comprehensive in detail and will prove to be an outstanding resource for those who wish to learn more about this unique form of fly fishing. Exploring a small stream is like reliving your childhood again. Each bend and pool in the stream brings new natural wonders and discovery that help rejuvenate the soul. Scouting for new and productive small streams in your region can be accomplished through the purchase of quality topographical maps. Additionally, your research may reveal that authors have written books about your region which will greatly aid in your exploring. Good examples of these types of books include Trout Streams of Michigan by Bob Linsman and Steve Navella, and Trout Streams of Alberta, authored by Jim McLennan. These are but just a few of the excellent resources that are available to you. Manufacturers have responded to the increased interest in small stream fly fishing, and now there's quite a bit of quality gear available. Check with your local fly shop for recommendations on proper equipment for your region. The leaders we typically use for this type of fishing are six to eight feet in length and the tippets can vary between 5x and 7x, depending upon conditions. Again, experimentation is a key to success. The fragility of small streams and their ecosystems cannot be emphasized enough. No impact hiking or wading is a must, and in this pristine environment, if you find trash, then please pack it out. These are incredibly delicate ecosystems, and you must do your utmost to protect them. <laughs> That's not as big as that one huh? No, but no size. For more information about the patterns we use today or about small stream fly fishing, please go to our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Raymond, thank you. It's been a wonderful day. Yeah, Very much you. enjoyed it. Small stream fishing for brook trout. It's a wonderful way to spend a day. It's very relaxing. It's a beautiful environment. And it really speaks to the essence of what fly fishing is all about. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Hey, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.